welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. To know that God is with you is enough to calm you. Because here it is, God may allow you to go into the furnace, but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you. He has power to do that or to ease your trouble mind. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1, simply reads as follows. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual, or another version says reasonable, service or worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is the word of God for the people of God, that he may be glorified, that we might be enlightened and that we might apply to our lives for change that glorifies God. Father, in the name that's above every name, we pause, oh God, to say thank you. The fact that we're here today says nothing about our goodness because the best of us, oh God, does not measure up to your standard. But our being here today speaks volumes of your goodness, of your grace and your mercy. And for this we say thank you. Father, we pray today that as your word goes forth, that the hearts of your people the hearts of everyone in this room, everyone on Facebook today and in the future, those who are on YouTube this evening, those who will be on YouTube in the future, those who are on the phone line right now, those who are on our website, Father, we pray that the word of God would stand with all power to fix every broken situation, to make alive every dead dead scenario in the name of Jesus. Winds from on heaven blow up on us today. Hallelujah. Your word asks a question, can these bones yet live? The answer is given, O God, by your prophet. Lord, you know. So you blow up on us. Not me, O God, but thee. Speak to your people. Consecrate my mind and my mouth. Consecrate their ears. That we might speak your word. We might hear your word. Hear your voice. In Jesus' name. Help us, O God. So that what we do not know, you teach us. Where we have not been, you take us. And what we are not, you mold and make us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together and tell God thank you and amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Uh, I want to make a confession. Uh, one One of the things that I want to say um, today, well, let me say it like this. I want to make confession of m- my grandson. Um, my grandson, who, who is now two years old, he, he is amazing to me. Now, your grandson or granddaughter, grandchild may be amazing to you, but mine is amazing to me because he has the appetite of a big boy. And when it's time to eat, 
He wants it all. Watched him on this on this uh, time away. We were in the south, and I tell you, it was nothing that you couldn't put before him that he didn't want. He wanted it all. I said he's greedy. <clears throat> But then I thought about where he come from. Greedy. He wants it all. But you know, he's in good company this morning. Because the God we serve, he's greedy, y'all. When it comes to you and I being his children, when it comes to us giving our life to him, guess what he wants? He wants it all. In the book of Romans, brothers and sisters, un, not unlike many of the books or the epistles that have been written, the letters that have been written by Paul, Paul declares in the first portion of this book that, that Jesus has died for our sin. He, he declares, brothers and sisters, that as a result of Jesus dying for our sin, we accepting Jesus Christ, we have now given our spirit to God. Our spirit, our, our, our spirit man belongs to God. The spirit soul man belongs to God. And, and, and here it is, brothers and sisters. The difficulty in this passage is as we get to chapter number 12, the difficulty for most people reading chapter 12 is not that you don't understand it. The difficulty is that we do understand it. Because here it is, brothers and sisters, as in most of Paul's writings, he, he opens up the first half of his writings and he talks about the doctrine of Christians. And then the second half, he usually moves to the duties of Christians. We, we like, the, we like the, 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 the doctrine. We like to know what this Christianity walk is all about. We want to know it. But then he transitions into the duties of, of a Christian. It's one thing to know that Jesus died for me and I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And that when I stood up in that water, hallelujah, I, I stood and told the world that I believe in the death of Jesus Christ. And when I was baptized and went beneath that water, I, I told the world that I believe in the burial of Jesus Christ. But then when I came up out of the water, I stood and told the world I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm not like those Sadducees who don't believe in resurrection. <clears throat> Somebody say, I believe. As Paul said, if there is no resurrection, we are most miserable people. If there is no resurrection, the, 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 the best on this side that can be lived is the best that can be lived. But thanks be to God, we recognize and realize that no, no matter how good it gets over here, this ain't the best there is, because the best is yet to come. For when I see Jesus face to face, and you do realize today, and I know you're shouting on the inside because you recognize that here it is, to be absent from the body yeah. is to be present with the Lord. Paul, he, he talks about in all of his epistles, he gives us the duties, or should I say he gives us the doctrine, but then he moves in the second half to the duties of a Christian. Not only that, he gives principles, but then he moves from principles to practices. Lord have mercy, you ain't shouting yet. But, but then he, he moves, brothers and sisters, as he talks about conversion, he moves to consecration. If you are a Doctrine, understanding, principle, uh, understanding, conversion, understanding, Christian. It, it shouldn't be a problem with having a life of duty, a life of practice, and a life of consecration. The shouting good news is, as he, he declares that we ought to be consecrated people, people who live for God, he, he helps us to understand that you can't do it by yourself. That's, that's where the shout comes in. God demands it, but he knows we can't do it by ourselves. He, he, he sent somebody that, that Jesus said, not only will be beside you, 
but will be in you. In order to help you to have a heart that's been changed from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. A heart that's alive to the word, will, and way of God. Isn't it amazing? And don't you shout when you get ready to do something that you know you ain't got no business and you hear the Holy Ghost say, don't do that. Because you remember the day when you didn't hear no Holy Ghost. Paul, Paul says, as you understand who Jesus is and what he's done for you, he says, I want to make an appeal. As you understand what God has done for you, I want to make an appeal. What does it say in Romans chapter 12, verse number one? He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. And when he's talking to brothers, he's talking to brothers and sisters of the faith. By the mercies of God. He said, when you look at all that God has done for you, when, when you look at all that God has done for you, when you look at all that God has done for you, when you look at all that God has done for you, when you look, you, you, may be, you may be behind the steering wheel on I-96, stuck in traffic. But when you look, you may be at home. Hallelujah. You may be at home at the dining room table. And you may not have what you wanted. You, you may have to have faith steak. You know what faith steak is, right? I learned, I, I learned what faith steak was when I was in, in Bible college. You know what faith steak was for us? It was a pack of ramen noodles. And my faith told me, as I chew into this, I'm going I'm to taste steak. <laughs> I'm going to thank God like it is steak. I don't have to wait till I get steak. I don't have to wait till I get to Ruth's Chris in order to thank God for what I have. In other words, he says, listen, he helps these. When you think about what God has done for you, the mercies of God, how not only has he provided for you, not only has he, he, he made a way out of no way, not only has he put clothes on your back, a roof over your head, food on your table, but ultimately what he has done is he sent his son, Jesus the Christ, to die for you. When you look at the mercies of God, you look at how, listen, brothers and sisters, mercy and grace are two different things. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. He said, but you ought to have some shouting good news that he didn't give you. He, he extended mercy. And mercy is not only, uh, it's not the same as grace, but they're twins. They walk together. See, grace is giving you what you don't deserve. But mercy is not giving you what you do deserve. He, he says, I appeal, I beg of you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you give God more than what, what, what you've given him. You, you, you gave him your heart, you gave him your spirit. But he wants more because he's greedy, y'all. He says, present your bodies to him. Did, did you realize that God wants your body? He, he, he wants your body. Well, what do you mean, preacher? Because here it is. He sent someone who was embodied that died for us in the form of Jesus the Christ, brothers and sisters, the Son of God, the Word incarnate. He dwelt amongst men, but he died. Hallelujah, for your sin and for mine. And then he was buried, and on the third day morning, he was raised with all power in heaven and earth in the palm of his hand. Amen? But then, brothers and sisters, as he was raised, he came and dwelt amongst us a little bit longer. And then the Bible tells us he was taken up into the clouds. Hallelujah. And so the body of Christ, sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. But also the body of Christ is still here on earth by way of you and by way of me. Because we have his spirit, 
We are the body of Christ. He wants your body. He, he wants your hands. He, he wants your hands. He, he wants your feet. He wants you to be able to carry his good news of what he's done for mankind to all various places. He wants my hands. That's hard, hard to shout about. But if you think that's hard enough to shout about, let me give you some. He wants your mouth. Somebody say, he's got my mouth. That's the reason why I didn't cuss you out last week. Because he's got. He, he got my hands. Look at your neighbor and say, he's got my hands. That's the reason why I didn't throw you a two-piece in a biscuit for what you said the other day. I don't do that no more. Somebody say, he's got my feet. That's the reason why I run away from mischief. You remember when you were, when you were immature in the faith? I'm not going to say a younger person, but when you were immature, because you can be old and immature, and you can be young and mature. But do you remember when you were immature and some foolishness was going on, how your feet would run to it? I remember one time, oh, this is the most ignorant thing I've ever seen in my life. We were at a party in, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, on campus. I told you I've been saved all my life, with the exception of their first two semesters of my collegiate life. But I remember we were in the party, and somebody said, he got a gun. And folks started running over there. I said, evidently, they weren't raised like I was raised. Because I ran like my, I had wheels. I was Shikari Richardson before she was. I was running. But do you remember when your, 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 you would run to foolishness? Yeah, folk, even nowadays, folks run to foolishness on their TV set. You know that stuff ain't real. It's just good. And, and we talk about this stuff like it's real life. Don't you know them? I know they call it, uh, whatever they call it, uh, life, something, reality. But you know them folks got a script. Okay, maybe you don't know. Maybe, maybe I just burst your bubble. But they got a script. And, and the reason why you know they got a script, because if they didn't have a script, some of the stuff that said, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a, a next week. Well, you know, so-and-so is in the hospital this week. So-and-so is dead. But, 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 but we, we, when, when we, God has our body, he does with it what he wants to do with it. And his word gives us what it is he wants us to do with it. We move, again, doctrine tells you what God expects or, or what God has done. But then duty tells you what he expects. And I know you're going to go home and read the rest of Romans 12 so you'll know what he expects. But he says, he says, present your bodies. Do you know that to present your body, what that means in essence is that God ain't got to make you do everything. Some stuff, when we think about the mercies of God that are plentiful in our lives, I don't care where you are in life. I don't care if you're in the guttermost or the uttermost as it pertains to, to mankind, brothers and sisters, and our way of doing things. I don't care where you are. God has extended mercy to all of us. And when you look at the mercies of God, it ought to make you say, what can I do to him or give to him to let him know how I am thankful Paul says, I'll tell you what you can give him. Give him your body. See, when I give him my body and I recognize my body is not my own, I don't wear just anything. I got one amen. You just don't know. See, it's summer, Reverend. Summer don't equal naked.
Can I get a witness in the house? Let, can, I, can, can my mothers help me out today? Amen. Uh, when your body don't belong to you, you don't just throw anything on. Cheek meat hanging out. Y'all know what cheek meat is. And I would love to just say it's the sisters. I wouldn't want to say that either, but I'm just saying. This 2024. Folk would. Let me pray a prayer right quick. <laughs> Folk with the anatomy and plumbing uh, that determines their function, that should determine their function. <sighs> Who may be twisted up in the mind uh, wear things. I put it like that. I saw a dude on, 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 online the other day, and, and it was, this, this guy was on, on the street doing interviews, asking questions about certain things. This guy had a tube top, top on. And clearly, he was a man. See, y'all want to get quiet right now because I know somebody in my family. Oh, it don't matter if it's your family or not. You know some thieves in your family, and you call them out. Ray, Ray, stay out of my bedroom. Matter of fact, when you know they're coming over, you go to locking stuff up, sliding the table in front of the door, if you answer the door. All sin is sin. So Ray, Ray, sin is bad for stealing. There's other sin for folk thinking they something that they ain't. He, said, he, says, he says, present your body. When your body belongs to God, you may want to wear something. You may want to go somewhere. But when your body belongs, and listen, it ain't the same for every, some stuff, some stuff, saints ain't got no business going nowhere. Amen? Some places we ain't got no business going nowhere. You can't, there's certain places you can't go in the name of Jesus. To the glory of God. Can I get a hearty amen? amen? Help me this morning, saints, because y'all getting quiet on the reverend. You know, if you don't say amen at the right spot, I'm going to stay right there. We'll be here to 345. <laughs> but there's some places we have no business going. And it ain't because you ain't strong. It's because it ain't wise. Paul said everything, he said everything that's lawful for me to do is not expedient. He said, just because I can go, just because I can do, just because I can say, don't mean it's the right thing to go, the right place to go, the right thing to say, and the right thing to do. Present your body. Body don't belong to you. He, he bought you. With the price of his blood, it don't belong to you. Present your, give freely to God. Your body. I knew something was wrong with that preacher. He was on TV with a muscle shirt on. That ain't right. Y'all trying to figure out who he is. He dead now. Maybe because he wouldn't. Nah, it ain't the muscle shirt. It was time for him to go, I guess. But, but listen to what he said. He says, present your bodies. Now, the writer understands that he's writing to people who understood the Old Testament and they understood the sacrificial law. They understood the sacrificial services. 
that the animals would be killed, their blood would be poured out, that, that they would be killed in order to atone for the sins of the people. These animals couldn't be offered alive. Their blood had to be shed. And so what he's getting to, brothers and sisters, and if you read chapter 1 through 11, you'll understand that Jesus has poured out his blood and that he's died for you and for me. So when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're accepting his payment for our penalty. And this payment is a grace gift. Amen. If it's not grace, it's not a gift. If it's something you got to pay, it's not a gift. So he says Jesus has shed his blood. He died once and for all. He gives up the ghost. Before he gives up the ghost, what does he say? It is finished. And when he does this, brothers and sisters, he puts us in a place and a space where we don't have to worry about death anymore as it pertains to a, a pain penalty for sin. It's already done. He says, so don't offer your body as a dead sacrifice. He says, but as a living sacrifice. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to tell yourself, I don't belong to me. I gave myself away a long time ago. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to say, God, my body belongs to you. I'm giving it to you. And so as I go throughout the course of the day, whoever you put before me, whatever I experience, whatever's going on in my house, whatever's going on on my job, whatever's going on in my church, God I belong to you, and you can use me however you want to. You can use me, oh God, to bring my marriage closer together. You can use me, oh God, to bring my children closer to, to, to Christ. You can use me to bring my neighbor closer to you. God, the reason why I don't let my trash fly out of the trash can all over the place is because I re represent you. So when a neighbor see you, they know you go to church every Sunday. They know you read your Bible. They know you always blessing your food and all that kind. Of, but you, so you represent Christ. They know that every time there's an issue and they come to you, you say, well, you know, the word of God says. For those who are believers, the word of God says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So then they know this about you. So everything about you on a daily basis when you wake up, you're saying, God, here I am. Use me the way you want me to be used for your glory. Did, did you know that even the way you do your work on your job with integrity and conscience, uh, conscientious when, when, the way you do your work the way you present you know if you always late turn it in reports with your Holy Ghost sanctify itself you always trying to be slick with your Holy Ghost sanctify itself if you always the one then when something come up missing, with your Holy Ghost, sanctify itself. There's a problem. He's going to get to that in a second. He says, how should you present your body as a living sacrifice? Holy and acceptable. Unto God. How, how, do you, how do you know what's holy? You know, we know God is holy. We, we know that God is holy, don't we? He, he's holy, and anybody, nobody's holy like him. But, but there's a way you can present yourself to God that's holy. And the way you find out what that is, is by reading and studying his word. Listen, we got to grow up, y'all. 
we can't keep on responding to life the way we've always responded because that's the way we've always responded. That's, that's what we've always done. We can't keep doing stuff because that's how my mama did it. I never will forget this woman, an old woman. Old. She said out of her mouth, I don't forgive people because my daddy didn't forgive people. Where her Holy Ghost sanctified self. Church member. Name was on the roll. And I said to myself, self? I said, what? <laughs> it looked to me that once you get to be a certain age, you will recognize, I, listen, I'm 53. I'll be 54 next month. Amen. Amen. We're going to, we, amen. Amen. But, but listen to this. I recognize at 53 years old, I probably got more days behind me than I got in front of me. And so why would I want to use the days I got ahead of me, knowing what I know about what pleases God to please myself? My daddy didn't forgive, and so I ain't going to forgive. Well, let me tell you something about your daddy. Uh, your daddy was created. And I can tell you the one who created him did not create him to be walking around in unforgiveness. I'm trying to be nice because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings about their daddy. I don't want to say your daddy might be in hell. I don't want to say that. Because how can you say you love God whom you've never seen, but you hate your brother that you see every day? The one that was created in the image and likeness of God. He said, man, holy and acceptable. Set apart. When you are holy, you're going to be different from the world. Amen. When you live in holy, you're going to be different. Listen, you're going to be different from who you used to be. Amen. Folk ain't going to always like it. Come on, man. Why you? Come on, man. You know how we used to do. That was in 1988. We were seniors in high school. It's 2024. We, I've grown. Holy why are you praying all the time? What's with this consecration stuff? What's with this going to church and, and worshiping and stuff? What is holy, separate? I live in the world with you, but I'm not of this world. Holy, I abide in two kingdoms. I live here in the physical realm, but I am what? I'm a member of the kingdom of God. Holy. Holy. See, when you live in holy, as you sing, as you play, you, you're, not, you're not here for a gig. Because you recognize that my body don't belong to me. When, you, when you're ushering, you recognize I'm not just here to look cute in my black and white. Although y'all do look cute now. But I'm here because my body belongs to God. And God, God has left on. Listen, listen. The psalm says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Listen, I would rather have, give, give me just a little something to do in the house of God. And here it is. I want people to recognize that when they see me, they see him. Uh, holy. Somebody say holy. He says, present your bodies holy. And acceptable. Following the Holy Spirit is what, what helps you to be acceptable to God. See, that don't mean perfect. Don't mean you don't make mistakes, but mistakes ought to be mistakes. See, when you get saved, you, you shouldn't be planning sin.
You, you shouldn't be able to pull up on your calendar. Okay, uh, let me see. All right, I got about three hours of downtime. So I can sin right there. <laughs> that ain't the only way you can plan sin. Let me tell you another way you can plan sin. When I see that heifer, <laughs> I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. Heifer is a cow, y'all. So don't. Holy, acceptable. You shouldn't be planning sin. I got four amens. I'm counting. <laughs> it's all right. You ain't got to say amen as long as you get it. Because once I say it, yeah. it's out there. Yeah. Goes on, he says, holy and acceptable to God. In other words, uh, goodness is not your standard. Well, I, I'm, I'm better than, than him. <laughs> He ain't your standard. I don't do what they do. That's, they're not your standard. The word of God is our standard. He says, which is your reasonable service? And another passage, ESV says, your spiritual worship. Did you know that you can worship God? You don't have to be in a building to worship God. Amen. Think about that, 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 house, that housewife that, 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 that prays and asks God to use her hands as she takes care of the home, as she holds her children. I think about that, that husband that use, asks God, you know, God, let, let me worship you as I'm on my job. Let me worship you as, as I'm in communication with my family. Because, you know, sometimes family is the hardest people. Oh, y'all don't know that. Let me tell y'all something. You know, sometimes family can be the ones that push that reserve nerve button. You know, you got a last nerve. And most saints got a reserve nerve. You know, it, but, but what you don't want to happen... Um, um, many of y'all know that, that years ago I was a member at Perfecting Church. And, 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 and one day, um, man, he's going to hear this probably, but it's okay. Um, Pastor Winans, uh, he had a Jaguar, and I think her, his car's name was Jackie. And, and he was the first person that let me drive a you know, foreign car. So he let me drive his car one day. And, but one day he was taking some well-known people to the airport, right? And... And I can tell it because he told the story as well. Taking some well-known people to the airport. And, and I think they were mostly actors from a different world. Um, so he's driving. And as he got to the airport, the gas hand went down. And he was like, don't worry about it. I got a reserve tank. Because it was two tanks on there. Well, the problem is, uh, it's cool when you hit the reserve and it's full. But it ain't cool. <laughs> Y'all get up off of Bishop Winans. But what I'm trying to say to you, brothers and sisters, is that here it is. You got to stay on your face before God, living holy, asking him to make you acceptable, because here it is. You will be tried, and when you're tried, whether it be by family, friend, or foe, you want to be able to do what? Hit that reserve tank. And that tank is full. You don't want to miss your flight. He said, man, he said, don't, th this is how you do it. He said, you got to be, you got to be a caterpillar. That's what he said right there. He said, you got to be a caterpillar. Don't be a chameleon. Ain't that what he just said? He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Caterpillars, let me say that again, uh, chameleons, whatever they touch, they look like it. They take on the form, the shape. You know, they, they're like the Wonder Twins. Oh, 
Wonder Twin. Wonder Twins activate. Form of a bucket of ice. Shape of whatever it is. Listen, they, 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 they blend in with whatever the surroundings are. He, he said, don't be a chameleon. Don't, 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 don't be conformed to this world. Trying to fit in so won't nobody, you know, I don't want to stand out. Let me tell you, if you're going to live holy, you're going to stand out. Think about it. If, okay. He says, be, do not be conformed to this world. The world says this is good. The world says this is okay. The world says this is acceptable. But God's word says no, it's not. So where you going to go? Choose you this day. Whom you'll serve. He says, but be transformed. I told you God wanted everything. He got your spirit. Right? You saved. Then he says, present your body. He said, but let me tell you something. You ain't going to really present your body until you what? Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The word transform comes from, the original word is the word metamorphosis, metamorphosis. And, and so metamorphosis simply means to change from within. A change from within that shows without. I just told you, be a, don't be a chameleon, but be a caterpillar. You all know that a caterpillar finds itself one day, voraciously eating, and, and, and as it's voraciously eating, it finds itself wrapping a cocoon of silk around itself. And as it's in the cocoon, brothers and sisters, you, you, you know that, that there's a change that takes place. And, and here it is, as the change takes place, it's not that the caterpillar didn't have this ability to be before, it's just that it had to go through a change in, a, in order to experience now becoming a beautiful butterfly. What Paul is saying is, what you need is in you, because he's talking to church folk, folk who have believed upon Jesus Christ. He says, what you need is within you, but you got to be willing to change, and the change comes in your mind. If you don't believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek you, you'll never see God do nothing. If you don't believe, brothers and sisters, that God will make a way out of no way, you'll probably never get a chance to see the way made for you. You ever been around negative people? Who wants to hang around with Debbie Downers and wet blankets? I'm telling I got some people, let me tell you, whenever they call me, I have to ask the Lord five times, should I answer the phone? My prayer is by the time I get to the fifth one, the phone will have stopped ringing. Because no matter what, you know, you can, they can say, How, how's everything going? Oh, well, you know, things are, I got a raise on that. Yeah, but. You know, the economy going down, so you probably ain't going to even feel that money. What? I thought I would have got at least five amens, but who's counting? <laughs> the renewal of your mind. Do you know that the, the word transformed here, it shows up at another time in, in Scripture? It shows up one day when Jesus was with his boys. He said, Peter, James, John, let's roll. Goes to a mountaintop. And as he's on the mountaintop, the Bible says he is transformed. Transfigured. <sighs> he's always been that Jesus. But what was on the inside, he allowed it to come to the outside. <sighs> he, 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 it shows up also with, with a man named Moses. As here it is, brothers and sisters, 
because Moses had spent some time with God. When he got before the people after he had spent time with God, they saw something different in him. In other words, what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters, as they saw the glow of the glory of God upon Moses, as the transfiguration of Jesus took place, there ought to be a transforming of our minds as well. And as there's a transforming of our minds, there'll be a transforming of our lives. Look up and be like, man, I don't even gossip like I used to. I don't even want to. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. He, he, he says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, testing, can I help y'all brothers and sisters? Folk love testimony, but you can't have a testimony without a test. You will be tested. He says, man, once you have given your mind to Christ, then you'll be able to do what? Discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. If you've been in, in church whatever amount of time and you can never understand the will of God, it's probably because you've not given God your body, you've not given him your spirit or soul, and you've not given him your mind. Because once you've given God your mind, then you'll be able to say, you know what? This is the will of God. That ain't the will of God. Because it's in the word of God. It, it amazes me that you can have a group of individuals, and I'm not just talking about this particular facility or this particular uh, church, but across the board to have people that you ask, do you know you saved? And they'd be afraid to raise their hand and say, I know I'm saved. Folk that's been in church a long time. But, but, but to say they don't know if they're saved, and I can tell you, a person that does not know if they're saved, the number one reason is because they're not eating the word of God on a continuum. <clears throat> eh, that was about nine claps. But who's counting? But when you eat the word of God as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That's what Timothy tells us. Brothers and sisters, the, I want to show you something. He says, um, he says by testing, you'll be able to discern what is the will of God, what is good, and acceptable and perfect. Again, that comes down, brothers and sisters, as I finish this for today. It comes down to us being accessible to the word of God because what the word of God does, it, it attunes our ear to the will of God. See, see, there's some people that slick tongue, y'all. Oh, they slick. They good. They got the gift of being able to say stuff in such a, 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 a way that, that, that lines up, and it, that makes sense. But see, when you know the word of God, and your ear has been attuned to it, they could say 99% right, but that 1% will stick out. And that 1% could make the whole 90, the rest of it wrong. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. Listen, y'all. Uh, there was a man, this is a true story. I can't remember his name, but he was in, in, uh, in school, college, and went to a church service. And as 
you know, the situation would be. He didn't have any money in his pocket when it was time for the offering. So he sat there. And he loved God, loved him wholeheartedly. He sat there and he thought, what could I give today? He pulls out a piece of paper and he writes on that. Now, y'all don't do this. <laughs> he writes on that piece of paper, myself. And he puts it in the offering. Now, here's the difference. Four years later, when he graduated college, he became a missionary and gave his life, his whole life, to making sure people understood the goodness of God, the grace and mercy of Almighty God, and how it is that Jesus shed his blood so that they could be saved. I said that because I told you God wants all of you. And I thought that would paint a really good picture. You, you, you don't, may not go on the missionary field, but, but you can still give myself. You, you can still give you. In every facet of life, every, every area of life, he wants you. Because he wants to use you for the glory that is even yet to be revealed. But we know it's going to be all right because it's the glory of God. Amen. If you know that this morning, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Um, as, we, as we move further in the worship experience, I, I got a question. Because there are people who, who want to know the will of God, the word and way of God. But we don't want to get to it the way God wants us to. And, and so here's the question. You ask yourself in, in, during the course of this week coming up, why should God reveal his will to somebody who doesn't want to give themselves to him? See, I know, I know traditionally some of us, you know, we, we come to church because, you know, it throw our week off if we don't come, and that's good. Some of us, we come to church because, you know, we want to see such and such, and they say they'll meet us then, and we're going to go out to brunch when we leave church if pastor quit preaching early enough. <laughs> I, I know people come to church for various reasons, but the truth of the matter is we come here to worship Almighty God alongside our brothers and sisters in the faith. But we don't want to come here and leave here and live life the same way, powerless. And, and, and here it is, life is always a response to something that happens to us. Always a response. Never, never us on the offense. I know y'all saw that game yesterday. Did you see the U.S.? Come on now. Come on. Amen. Amen. You, 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 I'm, about to, I'm about to mess up, but let me mess up like this. On the U.S. team, there's a player that didn't get to play. He rode the bench. Uh, great player. And he's on the team. He got a medal, but he didn't get in the game. He was just on the team. Then you got a Steph Curry. And listen, let me say something. Those first couple of games that Steph played, he stunk up the place. Oh, he was, he was missing some shots. But when it counted, them last two games, I almost thought that Steph couldn't. Let me tell you, and I think the reason why is because even after the, the games that he stunk up, and they, 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 they came to him and when they was asking him questions, he said, I want to thank God, yes, thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yes, for the opportunity to play on the highest level. Yes, so that last game that played yesterday, y'all, I think that Steph could have closed his eyes, put a blindfold on, and, and, and had one arm tied behind his back, standing on one leg, and it still would have went in. 
That's how good it was. What I'm trying to say is, brothers and sisters, life ain't going to always go the way you thought it should go. But if you keep on honoring God, keep on praising God and give him your all. Hallelujah. When it's needed, he'll step up and show out in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you today for your word. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You could also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this page.